Hey folks, and welcome back to the Sarcast. So, 5.4 is nearly upon us. It is another fortnight as of the time of recording, until 5.4 is actually released. And the PTR changes have more or less calmed down, and they have more or less settled on the mechanics changes that they're going to be making in 5.4. This of course means that we now know what changes are going to be made and it is now purely a case of actually tuning the numbers that those changes involve. So what I'll do first is I will run through the general, the holy and the ret changes fairly quickly and then we'll concentrate more on the prot changes as per normal. So the general changes are Sanctity of Battle now also affects the cooldown of Holy Shock. Seal of Insight no longer has a chance to restore mana on attacks and Turn Evil now has a 15 second cooldown. So those changes basically are aimed at Holy, uh, the first two at least anyway. Uh, Sanctity of Battle now also affects the cooldown of Holy Shock, which means that Haste now also affects the cooldown of Holy Shock. And Seal of Insight no longer will restore mana on melee attacks, which means Holy Polys no longer have to stand in melee range of the boss or mobs and attack to regain mana. So the specific Holy changes, the Holy Mastery Illuminated Healing will no longer affect activate from periodic healing effects, in other words the hot from Eternal Flame. This means that the duration of the shield will no longer be refreshed with each tick of Eternal Flame's hot. Divine Plea will no longer reduce the amount of healing done and will now restore mana based on the Paladin's Spirit. The holy version of Guardian of the Ancient Kings will now deal additional healing based on any heal cast by the Paladin for the 15 seconds of the duration of the spell. The Paladin also has 10% additional haste for the duration that the ability is active. Holy Insight now increases the effectiveness of Eternal Flame, Live Dawn and Word of Glory by 50%. Effectiveness of other heals are still increased by 25%. Holy Shock's mana cost has been reduced by 50%. And Judgment for Holy Paladins now costs 12% of base mana to cast, which is up from 5%. The Ret specific changes are only 2. Guardian of the Ancient Kings now has reduced cooldown of 3 minutes, down from 5 minutes. And the maximum number of stacks has been reduced to 12. And the second ret change was Inquisition now lasts for 20 seconds per charge of holy power consumed, up from 10 seconds. So, the protection specific changes then. Crusader Strike now also applies the Weakened Blows effect to the target, which is in addition to the Hammer of the Righteous. Grand Crusader no longer has a chance to activate from Crusader Strike and Hammer of the Righteous, but it now has a 30% chance to activate when dodging or parrying a melee attack, which is up from 12%. And then the final specific change for Prot is Guarded by the Light now restores 15% of the Paladin's maximum mana every 2 seconds, which is up from 6%. So looking at the changes to Prot in specific, Crusader Strike now applying the Weakened Blows debuff to the target in addition to Hammer of the Righteous. Pretty much everybody I know was using Hammer of the Righteous, and that was it. Uh, nobody was using Crusader Strike really for uh, DPS. So that now applies the debuff on use of both primary attacks, even though both hit like wet noodles still, but... The Grand Crusader proc change is in order to really make avoidance more attractive to prot polys. Still not going to make much of a difference, because the itemization required to actually get 1% of either parry or dodge is just still far too high, and that itemization would be far better spent on haste or stamina or just anything else. The Guarded by the Light change, where it now restores 15% of your maximum mana every 2 seconds, that is really in order to counter the Seal of Insight mana restoration change. So the talent changes then are as follows. Burden of Guilt has been replaced with a new talent called Evil is a Point of View. This is going to be a PvP one. Evil is a Point of View allows the Paladin to use Turn Evil on players and beasts. PvP. Eternal Flame's periodic heal over time effect now heals for 40% more. Execution Sentence will now immediately damage the target for 5 times the amount of damage that had been dealt by Execution Sentence's most recent periodic effect when dispelled. And in adjunction to that, Stay of Execution will now immediately heal the target for 5 times the amount of healing that had been dealt by the ability's most recent periodic effect when dispelled. Change to Hand of Purity now reduces damage taken from harmful periodic effects by 80%, which is up from 70% and now reduces damage taken from harmful periodic effects that cannot be prevented by immunities by 40%, which is a new ability. Sacred Shield for Holy. It now applies its damage absorption effect immediately. can be active on more than one target at a time, but the talent now costs mana and has three charges with a 10 second recharge. And for Prot, this is a bit of a nerf. 
Sacred Shield is 30% less effective. Sanctified Wrath for Holy will now also increase the critical strike chance of Holy Shock by 20%. And for Protection, Sanctified Wrath now causes Judgment to generate 2 Holy Power instead of 1 while Avenging Wrath is active. Selfless Healer, in addition to its current effects, now also causes Judgments to generate a charge of Holy Power for Holy Paladins. Stacks of Selfless Healer now reduce the cast time, mana cost and improve the effectiveness of Divine Light, Flash of Light and Holy Radiance. And in combination with that, Bastion of Glory will now apply Selfless Healer's bonus to healing to the casting Paladin as well as other targets and consume all stacks of Bastion of Glory in the process. And a big one for Prot, Unbreakable Spirit has been simplified, it now just flatly reduces the cooldown on Divine Shield, Divine Protection and Lay in Hands by 50%. So the glyph changes, there are two new glyphs in 5.4. The first one is Glyph of Divine Shield. Removing harmful effects with Divine Shield will heal the Paladin for each effect removed. This heal cannot exceed a percentage of the Paladin's maximum health. And the second new glyph is the Glyph of Hand of Sacrifice, which means the Hand of Sacrifice will no longer transfer damage taken by the target to the Paladin. Major glyph changes then. Glyph of Denounce now causes Holy Shock to reduce the cast time of the next Denounce by half a second and the effect can stack up to three times. The Glyph of Divine Plea now reduces the amount of mana restored and cooldown of Divine Plea by 50%. The Glyph of Holy Wrath now also allows Holy Wrath to stun apparitions. The Glyph of Immediate Truth now increases the instant damage done by Seal of Truth by 40% which is up from 30%. The Glyph of Inquisition has been redesigned. The glyph now increases the duration of Inquisition by 30 seconds, up to a maximum of 2 minutes, each time the Paladin lands a killing blow on targets that yield experience or honour. The glyph of Rebuke has been replaced with the glyph of Devotion Aura, and that now causes Devotion Aura to no longer affect party or raid members, but the cooldown is reduced. A specific one for Prot here uh, is Glyph of the Alabaster Shield. It now increases damage for the next Shield of the Righteous by 10% per stack, which is a nerf because it used to be 20% per stack. Glyph of the Battle Healer has been redesigned and this is a major one for us. The Glyph now causes Seal of Insight to no longer heal the Paladin. I'll repeat that. Using Glyph of the Battle Healer causes Seal of Insight to no longer heal you. Instead, a nearby raid or party member will receive healing for 30% of the amount that the Paladin would have received from Seal of Insight. I'll come back to that one later. Glyph of Turn Evil has been replaced with Glyph of Burden of Guilt, which causes judgments to reduce the target's movement speed by 50% for 2 seconds. And there are two new minor glyphs as well. Glyph of the Exorcist. Exorcism will now appear to remove evil from its target. And the second one is Glyph of Pillar of Light. Critical heals on other players display a small pillar of light at their location briefly. So there are quite a lot of changes there. You can go back over the holy and the ret changes, but I'm going to concentrate here on the prot changes specifically. So, first up, Crusader Strike now applying the Weakened Blows debuff to the target, in addition to Hammer of the Righteous. That means you can use either or. It can be a single target AoE situation. Take your pick. Grand Crusader no longer proging from Crusader Strike and Hammer, but instead activating from dodges and parries. Not a great change for us, it's nerfing Grand Crusader's chance to proc, because, in general, most prop parries will have around about a 20-25% to 25% chance to dodge your parry. That's a nerf, really. There's no other way to put that. Avenger Shield is one of our hardest hitting attacks, so that's going to nerf our DPS slightly. And Guarded by the Light now restoring 50% of our maximum mana is just to, like I said earlier, counteract the change to the Holy Insight mana restoration change. So the other things to have we look at is Sacred Shield. Sacred Shield is now 30% less effective for us as prot. It's still probably going to be the best talent in that tier, but don't expect as many absorbs from it as you used to get. Unbreakable Spirit is a good change for us. It just flat out reduces now Divine Shield, Divine Protection and Lay on Hands cooldowns by 50%. So you're always going to have Divine Shield and Divine Protection and Lay on Hand at a 50% faster rate than you used to. And you don't have to spend Holy Power now to actually reduce that cooldown. It's just flat out from the get-go. The biggest nerf for us in terms of glyphs here is obviously going to be the glyph of the battle healer. We used to do quite a bit of healing. Now most of that was self-healing, but we used to chuck out quite a bit of healing on the raid as well with glyph of the battle healer. And it was extremely useful for the likes of single tanking Tortoise. Uh, if you were tanking the boss and you had glyph of the battle healer, the heals you used to put out on the rest of the raid and yourself attracted the vampiric bots when they came in. 
and meant that you were able to keep yourself up and tank Tortoise and the bats and do an insane amount of DPS as well at the same time. However, as soon as 5.4 drops, remove Glyph of the Battle Healer. You need to take that out. You will nerf your self-healing completely if you keep that in. So make sure as soon as 5.4 drops on the 11th of September in the EU and the 10th of September in the US, make sure that Glyph is removed from your Glyph book. You do not want to be tanking with that in because you will not heal yourself outside of Word of Glory. I can't imagine a fight where you would need to have that glyph now. That is a massive, massive nerf to our self-healing with that glyph inscribed. There's just no one who's going to use that now. And if you were one of the users of Burden of Guilt, that can now be used as a major glyph rather than a talent. So the other main change for Prot to be aware of going into 5.4 are the changes to Vengeance. Whereas before in 5.3 and earlier, we used to get vengeance from any mob we tanked, especially in large AOE groups where your vengeance got very high and you were able to tank and gain an extraordinary amount of attack power as a result. That is now being nerfed to stop us getting to be top of the DPS meters when tanking large groups of mobs. Blame the QQing DPSers who couldn't top the charts in every single fight. This means that, for instance, for the likes of the trash just before Iron Con, if you were to tank that in 5.3, your vengeance would get pretty high and you would actually be able to pull off some impressive DPS. My own record for that was just about 870k DPS. However, with the changes to vengeance, what's actually going to happen is that you will gain incrementally less vengeance for each additional mob you're tanking. You'll still be able to put out threat equally on all mobs as per normal. However, the attack power you gain from doing so will be far less. This means of course that your DPS will of course suffer when trash tanking on large groups of trash. The other big change to vengeance is of course that when standing in fire, prior to 5.4 you used to gain vengeance from standing in fire or other crap on the floor. As of 5.4 that will no longer be the case. This is in order to stop high-end guilds abusing the fact that standing in area of effect effects used to increase the tank's vengeance and therefore allowed them to do more DPS. This of course will not be the case in 5.4, so think of your healers and get the hell out of the fire. So it's a bit of a mixed bag there really. There are some good changes, some bad changes. It really will not change how we play the game at the moment. For any major changes to our play style, I think we're going to have to wait for 6.0 rather than waiting on the final tier. With the higher end gear coming in 5.4, especially with heroic rating, prop polys will be able to hit the 50% haste max that we're aiming for. That will get our GCD down to one second and allow us to max out our DPS and our survivability. Once you're at 50% haste, concentrate on strength and stamina and mastery. Any more haste above that, reforge it off, get rid of it because it's completely useless. So that's a pretty detailed look at the changes coming in 5.4. Like I said, there is still numbers passes to be done at the time of writing. So when this goes live, these are the changes that are going to go live with 5.4. So just watch out for them. And above all, remember to remove Glyph of the Battle Healer. You do not want to be starting tanking with that in your Glyph book live because you will find your healers complaining and saying that you're a lot harder to heal than you had been previously, which will be the case. Other than that, it's basically a case of waiting and seeing how the changes actually come into effect in play. Once 5.4 goes live, and we're a couple of weeks into the tier, I'll do another video and let you know how the changes are actually affecting playstyle and our ability to survive. There probably will be a couple of videos up between now and then anyway on other things. So uh, until then, cheerio. to the pools.
run rampant for far too long, Hellscream. But that stops now. <laughs> Step aside, Pandaren. You confront a force beyond reckoning. Your father dabbled in powers beyond reckoning. Where is he now? <laughs> Fires of my hatred. <laughs> 